Hello everybody, today we'll talk about root mean square. So the root mean square or RMS of a set of numbers is defined as the square root of the mean squares of the set. RMS is also referred to as a quadratic mean. RMS value of a continuous waveform is the square root of the arithmetic mean of the squares of the values. Let's look at the equation so it becomes more clear. So let's consider a sample size of n and let's say the sample values are x1, x2, all the way up to xn. Now the arithmetic mean is just a basic mean that we all know from high school. It's just sum of all the values from x1 to xn and divided by the number of the sample size, which is n. And that's the arithmetic mean. But the quadratic mean or the RMS is a little different. You square the values first and then add them up. So on the numerator, you can see here it's x1 squared plus x2 squared all the way up to xn squared and then divided by the number of the sample size, n. And finally, take the square root. There you go. There we have the RMS or the root mean square. Now let's talk about some terminologies in sine waves. So we'll be discussing using sine wave for RMS calculations. So sine wave is the you know the uh, simple periodic wave that oscillates back and forth. In this case, it starts from zero, reaches a positive maxima plus a, and then comes back to zero, goes to the negative maxima, and then returns to zero. And this cycle keeps going on and on. So basically, a sine wave has a crest, which is the region where you know you have the positive maxima, and a trough where, where you have the negative maxima. So the Either the maximum displacement covered by the wave in either crest or trough is the amplitude and time period is the time taken by the wave to cover one crest and one trough and also the displacement covered by the wave along the time axis is the wavelength. So why do we need RMS? An oscillating signal such as an acoustic wave or a sound wave would oscillate above and below the mean position as we saw in the previous slide. So if you take the arithmetic mean of all the pressure values, you know, you literally sum up to zero because there are equal number of positive and negative values. So for example, in the crest, you, all, you have positive values, whereas in the trough, you have negative values. And they're both equal. So you simply take an arithmetic mean, you're going to get zero. Now, if you get zero, it would mean that the wave has no energy, which is not true. So we need a representation to convey that, you know, to calculate the energy that the wave has. And that's where RMS comes in, because the RMS or quadratic mean would not yield zero because we're squaring things up. So even if there is a negative value, you square it up, it becomes positive. So hence RMS is used to indicate the equivalent steady state energy value of an oscillating signal. So when do we need to use RMS? So as we discussed in the previous slide, RMS is calculated for time varying signals where the magnitude of signal varies with time. For example, sinusoidal waveforms or any other time varying waveform. Now, RMS will be meaningless for a DC waveform because DC waveform does not vary, vary with time. It's rather constant with respect to time. So what are the steps for computing the RMS? First, we discretize the waveform into discrete points. This is also digitization of the signal. Greater the number of points, greater is the accuracy. We note down all the values at each discretized point and then compute the quadratic mean you know, to find the RMS value. For some special waveforms such as sine, square, triangle, and sawto, the RMS value is related to the peak amplitude, peak value of the waveform or the amplitude of the waveform. So let's calculate the RMS of a sine wave. So I have here a sine wave and I've discretized into 20 points. So as you can see on the table, we have the amplitude from A1 to A20. Now, if we just look at the table and add all the values, you can see that there's an equivalent negative value for every positive value. So if you literally add them up, you'll get zero, which is not true. Uh, you know, it's, just, it's not a good representation of the energy of the wave. So we take the RMS and find out the value. So we plug in all the values in our RMS equation and then finally compute the value to be 14.15. And for a sine wave, there is a relation between the RMS and the peak amplitude, which is RMS uh, is value is 0.707 times the peak. And that gives a value very close to our calculated value. So RMS uh, of a sine wave has a relation to the peak amplitude, which is A, A is the peak amplitude, A over root two or 0.707 times A. For a square wave, the RMS is exactly same as the peak amplitude. 
for a triangle wave, it is a over root 3 or 0.577 times a. For a sawtooth, it is the same as the triangle wave, 0.577 times a. Now, let's calculate the RMS of a random wave. Now, this signal is a human whistle, and you can listen to it. So, I have chosen a sampling rate of 44 kilohertz, and sample size is 98,044 because the audio length is 2.23 seconds. If you multiply 2.23 by 44 kilohertz, you're going to get the, the number of the sample size is 98,404. And then I, you know, I have the pressure values in the linear scale, squared it, add it, and take the mean, and I get the RMS value to be 0.311. So, to conclude, RMS of a continuous waveform is the square root of the arithmetic mean of the square of the values. It is also referred to as a quadratic mean. It is used to indicate the equivalent steady state energy value of an oscillating signal. Alright, thank you for watching. Have a great day.